I want to depart from my current discussions of the post-tribulation rapture, and his second coming, and devote the next few videos to medicines and healings. I had a personal experience that moved me to research this topic in scripture, and this video will be the beginning topic of the next few videos. Please come and learn with me, things about health, healings, and medicine in the Bible. We begin our study with Naaman, a Gentile of Syria, who is a leper. Listen to what scripture says of him. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master, and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. So, Naaman was a captain in the king's army, and greatly respected and honored by the king of Syria, because by him, empowered by God, he and the armies of Syria were able to capture the nation of Israel because of their long-lasting idolatry against God. And this great man of valor was also a leper. What is a leper? A leper is a person with a bacterial infection that causes the soft tissue and nerves of the host to decay away and smell as it gradually disfigures the person infected by it. The ears decay away as well as the nose, fingers, and toes. And the nerves are destroyed preventing feeling of pain causing eyelids to stop blinking and hands and feet to be amputated from gross infections. In Israel in that day, such people were not permitted to live among the average people, but were confined to colonies with their own kind. But if they had to come among the people, to beg for help, and sustenance, they had to shout, I am a leper, and the people would flee, and scatter away from them. But in the case of Naaman, he was a leper, of a Gentile nation, who was a captain in the king's army, and a ruler over many hosts, who lived among the people, and was welcome in the courts of the king. This is how a Gentile nation treated their sick with dignity, which should have been done in Israel, the nation created by the hand of God. And the Syrians had gone out by companies, and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. God appointed a captain in the Syrian army to conquer Israel, and take away captives back into the land of Syria, and among them was a certain maid that became a servant to the wife of Naaman, the leper. Now, this Jewish maid, brought up in the Jewish culture to shun and stigmatize a leper, is now living with, and among, and serving a leper, and his healthy wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria? for he would recover him of his leprosy. Here you have a Jewish maid of Israel, captured and taken as a slave into a foreign country, who is servant to her mistress, who has a husband with the dreaded disease of leprosy. And she, in an act of love for her mistress, offers to her a way, to recover the disease of leprosy from her husband, by a prophet in Israel, that he just recently conquered. There is coming a time in these last days, when war will ravage the nations, and leprosy will become prevalent again, and captives will be taken away into other nations. How many of you will seek the well-being of your masters who have taken you into captivity as this maid has done? And one went in, and told his lord, Thus and thus said the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed, and took with him ten talents of silver, and six thousand pieces of gold, and ten changes of raiment. The wife of Naaman, after hearing what the maid servant had said, got the message to one of the men in her husband's charge. And he got an audience before the king of Syria, and told him, that which the maid had said. And the king, recognizing that Naaman was of a great service to him, agreed to accomplish his healing, and sent to the king of Israel, a letter explaining the same, with a payment of silver and gold, and ten changes of clothing. 
And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. Here, the servant of the king of Syria, stands before the king of Israel, with a letter from his king, and with Naaman the leper, for the king of Israel to recover him from his sickness. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive, that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. The king of Israel, knowing he does not have the ability to recover a man from his leprosy, ripped his garment in protest, believing that the king of Syria did this to bait him into another conflict with himself. And it was so when Elisha the man of God had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. At this point, I want you to see something you may not have come to realize. Do you think it was happenstance that a certain Jewish maid, with the heart for God, became the servant of the wife of the captain of the Syrian king's army? No, God allowed her to be captured, to position her in a place where the captain of the king's army and the king himself would come to see the glory of God in the healing of Naaman. I'm sure, the maid, was troubled for being forced to leave her country as a free woman, to go into slavery for her captives. But unbeknownst to her, she was right where God wanted her. And her suggesting the prophet in Israel, could heal her mistress' husband, most probably was a thought given her from God. So Naaman came with his horses, and with his chariot, and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and went away, and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Parfar rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Isn't it funny? how we have a preconceived idea, of how God should work his miracle, in our life. Naaman saw in his mind, Elisha coming out to meet him, then calling upon his God to heal him, with the laying on of his hands. But Elisha never came out to meet him, but sent his servant with a message for him, to go and dip, seven times in the Jordan River and he would be clean. Most of us are like Naaman. We need an actual touch from the servant of God, to act as our sugar pill, to activate our faith, to receive God's healing for us. When just His word in our life is enough, and is no less powerful. So Naaman, believing his journey to receive a healing from Elisha was a waste of time, went away with a great indignation, and was not healed. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash, and be clean? I think sometimes, we are our own worst enemy. Naaman was a man with a mindset to be an accomplisher of hard things. He was driven to push through circumstances and win by might. Therefore, he could not conceive of achieving anything without a struggle. So, when he was told to do an easy thing to solve his problem of leprosy, which he had for a long time in his life, he had no capacity to see success in that way of doing it. But God surrounded him with level-headed men to counsel him, and they persuaded him to obey what was told to him. Then went he down, 
and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again, like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. It is my thoughts, that Naaman, had no faith that the dirty waters of the Jordan River, would aid in the healing of his leprosy, so him having faith for his healing was not present. Nevertheless, he went and did how he was instructed, he dismounted his chariot, and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River. And when he came up the seventh time, his skin was refreshed and as smooth as a child. And his body was clean and healed of his leprosy. And God healed him of his leprosy, not because of his faith, but rather because of his obedience. God counted his obedience for righteousness. And he returned to the man of God he and all his company, and came, and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now, I want you to see what God accomplished with this healing of Naaman. Naaman dipped himself seven times in the Jordan River, before the eyes of a company of Syrian soldiers. When he came up clean, not only did Naaman become a believer, but most likely, so did all of the company of soldiers that witnessed it. Then, Naaman went back to the king of Syria, to present himself before the king. And the king examined him and confirmed his recovery, and the king wondered after the God of Israel. Then, Naaman went home to his wife, and presented himself before her, and she too, examined her husband, and praised the God of Israel. And the maid that was captured from Israel, and became the servant of the wife of Naaman, was held in high esteem by her captures, and had favor from that time going forward. So, what is the moral of this story as it refers to healing? The moral is, if you receive a word from God concerning your healing, be obedient, as it will perform itself, if you are obedient, whether you believe or not. This is an example of the God of Israel, showing himself to be no respecter of persons, by showing his glory to the lowest maidservant, and to the highest king of a Gentile nation, and thus saving many from the worship of idols, to the true and living God. If you are not saved, and would like to be pardoned for your sins, by the God of Israel, tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe he was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe he was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then, now are your sins forgiven, and you have an inheritance in heaven, because you are now a son of God. Thanks for watching. I believe, as we come into these last days, God will raise up workers of miracles, and they will not just lay on of hands, but also speak the word, from long distances, to bring health to his people. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. Amen.